I have something so exciting to share with you, but I'm going to do it a little bit later in this episode. But oh, I was out for a walk and I just got hit with this like bolt of inspiration and I can't wait now. I'm just so excited for it. But before we do that, let us dive into today. Today I want to talk about posture and how potentially poor posture, which so many riders struggle with, can be actually hindering you and your horse in your training, in your development and in everything you're trying to do together. Today I want to talk about how you can first of all identify if that's an issue for you and how you can begin to solve the problem. So let's dive in. Hey there and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach and I work with riders from all over the world to help them to build confidence in their own abilities so that they can go ahead and begin to communicate and train their horse a little better. Okay, so I want to dive into posture and I know this seems like a really maybe a basic thing and I think just like our posture in real life, um, it's something that Maybe a lot of us don't, you know, we wouldn't put a huge amount of emphasis on as being important. But the thing about bad posture is that when you are initially kind of maybe at the beginning of something, okay, maybe your life, it's not such a big thing. It's later. It's the compounding effect of it that tends to then catch up. Okay. And that is true in horse riding as well. Okay. And I think that no rider like intentionally goes out to ride in a way that negatively impacts the whole the whole performance or the whole ride itself and yet posture is or, or poor posture anyway is definitely something that is going to to impact that and what's very kind of often the case with posture and, and poor posture is that it starts off as something that happened once or twice and caused maybe the rider to ride a certain way. And then over time, the rider almost gets stuck there. It becomes a habit, okay? And I think that it's really important for you to begin to, first of all, identify maybe what's going on and then to begin to make changes so as you can begin to have better posture in your riding because it is going to help everything else. Okay, so when posture is kind of not not where we would want it to be okay there's a few little telltale signs okay the first one may be that you notice that you have maybe a lack of balance in the saddle now <laughs> I know we, you're like well that's all the time no no but really what I would look for here is that you're beginning to tilt or to tip Okay, there's a little bit of tilting going on. Now, some riders will tilt forward, okay, some will kind of tilt back, okay, and of course, forward or back being off the line. If we think about position and we think about the head, shoulder, hip, heel line, you're gonna be, you're gonna be kind of either in front of it or behind it, okay. Neither is ideal, but you might notice that the other way that you can tilt would be to the side, and this would be especially around uh, banes, corners, circles. You'll notice this kind of collapse or this tilting one way or the other, okay. What I think is important to realize is that whatever way and whenever you are tilting or tipping, you're going to notice that your horse is going to struggle as well, okay? Because your lack of balance is really going to negatively impact your horse's own balance. And very often you'll see horses speed up and you'll often see this through corners or bends, okay? If the rider is unbalanced up there okay um he'll speed up or he might slow down i have a few horses that as soon as they feel the the rider and especially the school ponies as soon as they feel the rider becoming a little kind of less than centered they will slow down they are the the brilliant ponies they're the priceless ones okay but they slow down and they kind of you know assist the rider to maybe get their balance back okay Now, what you might also find is that your horse is actually falling in or out on a circle as well. And this could be, again, that you're tipping or tilting and your horse is basically like, hold on, I'm going to try and stay underneath her to keep us both upright, okay? So I think it is important to understand. And then finally, if you find that you're kind of tipping back a lot or tilting back a lot, your horse may actually become quite hollow. And really, it's because it's probably uncomfortable for your horse and he's just trying to get out from underneath you, okay? He's like, it's, it's not feeling good. So you'll find this hollow 
hollowness through the horse as well. So, you know, it's an issue. Now, the next thing that can show up to do with poor posture is tension and stiffness, okay? And of course, if you are riding for any length of time with excessive tension or lack of tension. Tension can go both ways, okay? So you can have, um, tension is very much like, it's like Goldilocks. Tension is relaxation, by the way, okay? Well, managing the tension is relaxation. Um, If we think about horse riding and we're thinking about relaxation with regards to horse riding, that's really what it is. And you always want to be the Goldilocks, the just right, okay? You don't want it like too much, excessive. You don't want it too little, okay? Lack of. You need it just in the middle. And that can be a difficult concept for riders to, first of all, understand, and then to actually be able to maintain, to notice and maintain and make slight changes. So as they're either dissipating or they're adding to whatever needs to happen with regards to maintaining the correct level of tension for whatever it is you're doing. Okay. And of course, anytime you do something new or you add something extra into the fold, it's very often the relaxation, the tension that goes a little, you know, wonky. Okay. So I think that it's really important to notice this through your body. What I'm going to suggest you do is you go back to the previous episode of the podcast. It was 1319, episode 1319. So if you go to stridesforsuccess.com forward slash episode 1319, um, you will find it there. And it's all about opening up and practicing expansion because I think that would really help there for you as well. Now, the next thing that often happens is a closed or a shut down position. And this is really the reason I'm actually recording this podcast because I've seen so many people do it. I always call it a hamster effect. It's like they they roll into a little ball. They're hunched over, shoulders are closed tight, chest is closed, and they're riding with their hands touching each other off, and they're gripping with their legs and their knees, okay? And it's just, they're just curled up into a ball. It's like somebody crumpled them up on top of the horse, okay? Now, very often this begins as a bit of a defense mechanism, although (laughs) the irony is like, if there's something going on and that's your defense mechanism, uh, I can't see you helping the situation any at all, okay? But over time then, it ends up being a habit and it's it's not a great habit now at all. Like I think it's fairly, you know, it's fairly obvious to say that if you're crumpled up up there, you cannot be effective. And again, listen to last week's episode and um, it goes more into that as well for you, okay? Now, Obviously, if you are trying to ride and you're noticing that there's an issue maybe with responsiveness or just with the aids in general, maybe your horse is not um, listening to you. There's boundaries that are not being respected. Um, It could be that you're kind of using your aids in a way that maybe your horse, you're thinking, "Eh, does he understand this at all? Okay. And yet somebody else gets on and does the same and it's fine. Very often that is then a symptom that there's a posture issue going on, okay? And remember, if you're trying to communicate with your horse for whatever period of time and you know, the two years are kind of running into a brick wall over and over. There is going to be a lot of frustration and irritation, all these feelings that really and truly don't help with the whole the whole kind of feeling good about the ride and the relaxation. And remember, relaxation is a foundational piece. We need relaxation. Now, some riders, due to the bad posture or the poor posture, they're going to end up feeling you know, feeling sore, feeling discomfort, okay? Um, It could be that you notice there's a lot of muscle fatigue in your riding, even though you feel like, hold on, I should be fitter than this now, but yet you're noticing this muscle fatigue. Um, That can often be due to the bad posture. And then also, obviously, if there's like back pain or things like that as well, okay? Um, It could be due to that. And then you know, your core just won't work. And, you know, we do need our core, eh? Like we need a strong core when we ride horses. So what can you do? If you've noticed that you're crumpled up, if you've noticed that you're tilting or you're tipping, if you notice that your aids aren't working as well as they could be, if you're noticing all the things, okay, I mentioned a lot there. Now there's obviously more, but you know, they're just a couple to run through. What can you do? Well, I think the very first thing you can do is that you can begin to become more aware of your body, okay? When you understand the the principles of your body's position and alignment and where it quote unquote should be, 
in the saddle when you're riding, you can then begin to feel and notice when things are not right, okay? And this is where really practicing exercises can help. And I think exercises both on the horse and off the horse, okay? I think this is really important. We need to have a certain level of fitness, a certain level of suppleness, a certain level of of just ableness okay through our body is that even a word I don't know okay but we need to have it in our body like we need to be able to do the things okay but I think that this is where maybe we're falling short we're, we some of us you know horse riding is really the only activity and strenuous or like really if you want regular activity that we're doing any time and you know it makes sense that then we're not really going to be able to improve we need to begin to train our bodies to become more flexible to become more kind of just aware okay now this is where I would definitely say yoga and pilates or or pilates they can really help and the other thing that could help will be the 2024 equestrian fitness challenge i know this is what i'm so excited about but you know what we're not going to be on mats doing exercises no it's a walking challenge i got this the other day i was out walking i thought wouldn't it be so cool to get like loads of riders walking because i know firsthand that when you walk it just it helps everything and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to build the challenge around walking but We're also going to have a yoga element because my lovely sister is coming on board. She's a yoga instructor. She's coming on board to also help us out with the yoga end of things. So you can pop over to equestrianfitnesschallenge.com and you can get signed up there. We're kicking it off in June, so you can go over there. But yeah, I do think it's really important to understand that they kind of coincide. They are related. They are hand in hand. Your body's ability to control itself and then your posture and you being able to communicate with your horse okay they go hand in hand now the other thing I would focus on would be actual riding lessons if you could get somebody to obviously somebody who knows what they're talking about um to help you in the arena that would be brilliant because very often we don't actually know what we're doing or we don't realize we're doing something and it's only when it's pointed out by somebody that we can then become aware of it and we can begin to actually change that so I think that you know riding lessons with a focus on correct alignment um, and then obviously through movements and the balance and all that that is going to really help and if you can't get riding lessons maybe and I know this is a big stretch of a maybe but you could use something like mirrors in the arena now wouldn't it be a perfect world if we all had mirrors in the arena? I know we don't, but you know what? You know what we all do have? Smartphones. And well, I'm, you know, the majority of us have, okay? The, the vast majority. And they can video. And if you can take videos of yourself riding, and especially if you can get some sort of a uh, kind of an automated technology that's going to track you around, okay? If you can do that, um, that would really, really be helpful because then you can look back on those videos and you can check out what's going on. So I think that that would really help. And then again, come back to increasing the fitness and the stamina, okay? I think that again, this is where walking works. I think walking is brilliant. Um, and I think that if you could walk more and whether you're walking on the road, if you're on a treadmill, if you are hiking and you're on the trails, I think a combination of things are great. Uh, I don't have a treadmill, so I just walk outside. Um, but, you know, walking is even great from the perspective that if it's a really rainy day and if you're really dedicated to it, you could just walk around a room in the house, okay? Like, listen to your favorite podcast, go for a walk. There we go. Um, and again, this is what the 2024 Equestrian Fitness Challenge is all about. I'm going to be keeping you company for the 21 days on your walks. And of course, we're talking all things horse riding, improving yourself as a rider, mindset and all that fun stuff. But I think that it is something that is underrated and that the more you could incorporate it into your daily activity, the better is going to be. And then finally, it's going to be mindfulness and connection. And I think this is so important. Um, I think the connection, building the connection with the horse and also mindfulness of what you are doing, like your self-awareness around your horse is really going to help as well. Um, And I think that this can definitely, if you put it all together, you're going to improve your poor 
posture. Okay. I think identify it first of all, and then from there, begin looking at ways to begin to strengthen your body so that you can begin to actively create better habits for yourself. Okay. When it comes to riding and in the saddle, what I noticed just before I leave is that very often riders have great posture until they don't. So what you'll find is there'll be certain movements where the the habit has come in of riding that slightly differently. And again, it can often be down to maybe a lack of confidence at some point or a lack of confidence even in your own abilities at some point um, that's causing it. But I do think that it's really important to understand it shows up. So maybe from like doing you know walking and trotting everything's good but as soon as you canter for you it could be like oh dear look at that I'm a bit crumply there um or it could be around corners for you or whatever okay there's always maybe through transitions downward transitions maybe upward transitions okay there could be specific points in the ride where your posture could be improved identify them and then begin to work on it i think it's so 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 important and again if you want to join us inside of the equestrian fitness challenge the 2024 it's brand new as again we're not going to be working out eh? we're going to do walking and yoga every day it's going to be lovely and and like not big long yoga you know what i don't have an hour a day to do yoga so i've said to her i told her to rein it in keep it in at about 10 minutes of course my sister also is an equestrian so there we go it'll make it just really really fun and exciting for everybody you can find out all the details and sign up over at equestrianfitnesschallenge.com and you know get a get a horsey friend to do it with you like the two of you do it together and challenge each other to stay on track for the 21 days and see where it takes you and your horse. Okay, I will chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.